Tired of getting spanked by tentacles? How about getting pecked to death by tall birds? And what is the best way to take down that disgusting Yukus? Well, you're in luck as today we're going to learn how to fight all the things. Bosses and mobs covered in prior episodes not included. Strategies covered apply to all DLCs as well as don't start together. Results shown here are not typical and are no guarantee of outcomes in your particular game or situation. All rights reserved, batteries not included, side effects may be fatal, use at your own risk. Hey there, my name is Salandrak and welcome to episode 7 of my Don't Starve Beginner's Guide series. Today is all about combat and we'll go over the mechanics of armor and damage reduction, talk about weapons, and briefly cover how to fight just about all the surface level mobs in Don't Starve except for bosses and other specific creatures that have already been covered or are soon to be covered in other episodes. The vast majority of information covered in this guide will apply to Don't Starve Together, but if you are playing the multiplayer version, just be aware that sometimes your latency can throw off the kiting pattern timing, and pretty much all the mobs have more health in DST. Also, you only get damage reduction from one worn piece of armor in DST, and all armors have lower durability than they do in the single player version of the game. But other than that, what you learn here can be taken and applied to Don't Starve Together. As always, if you find this guide helpful, informative, or at the very least somewhat entertaining, please hit that like button and subscribe to help grow the channel. Also, be sure to check the timestamps down in the description if you need to head to a specific topic or monster, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Now let's get to it! The first major topic I want to cover today is armor, as I can't stress enough the importance of always wearing protection whenever you're likely to get into a fight, which can pretty much be any given moment and don't starve. At the very least, you should always have at least a football helmet and or log suit in your inventory at all times as soon as you're able to get them, especially when you're just learning the game. In total, there are 7 chest armor pieces in Reign of Giants and 6 head armors, two of which are character specific, namely Wigfrid's battle helm and Wagstaff's visor, and one of which is only effective against bees. Each piece of armor provides a fixed amount of damage reduction and has a specific amount of durability. And here's how all those stats work together to keep you alive. If, for example, you are wearing a football helmet which provides 80% damage reduction and starts with 450 durability, and you get hit by a tall bird which does 50 damage per hit, then that 50 damage from the tall bird gets reduced by 80% by your helmet so that you take only 10 damage, and the remaining 40 damage gets subtracted from the armor's durability, reducing it from 450 down to 410, or about 9%, off its total durability. What if you were wearing a marble suit? Well, it provides 95% damage reduction, so you would take 5% of 50 damage, which is 2.5 damage to you, and the suit would take 47.5 damage, which is about 4.5% of its max durability. In contrast, a grass suit only provides 60% damage reduction, so one hit from a tall bird would reduce your health by 20, and the grass suit would lose just over 13% of its measly 225 total durability. Because of its low durability and low damage reduction, the grass suit is basically worthless and really should not never be used. Now, in single player Don't Starve, you can wear two pieces of armor at the same time and get the full damage reduction of both of them, what is often called armor stacking. Whichever piece you put on last will be designated as the primary armor and will reduce any incoming damage before the remaining damage is then further reduced by the secondary armor, and finally anything left is subtracted from your health. So using a tall bird's 50 damage attack, if you put on a log suit followed by a football helmet, the football helmet would be primary and reduce the incoming damage by 80% from 50 down to 10 and take 40 damage from its durability, then the log suit would reduce the remaining 10 damage by another 80% down to 2 and take 8 off of its durability, and your health would go down by a mere 2 HP. Note that because the football helmet is taking 80% of the total damage, it will break really fast compared to the secondary log suit. So keep that in mind when stacking armor, so that if you have something you want to last much longer, be sure to put it on first so it will be the secondary armor taking less damage. And don't starve together, stacking the damage reduction of two armor pieces does not work. 
Instead, the game will apply the benefit of whichever armor has the better damage reduction, and then apportion the durability loss between the two armors based on the ratio of their damage reductions. So for example, without getting into the math too much, if you were wearing both a log suit and a football helmet in Don't Starve Together, incoming damage would be reduced by 80% and each armor would lose the same amount of total durability since they have the same amount of damage reduction. Now, I haven't tested this stuff out in DST myself, but have read about there being some situations where this does not work out in your favor, particularly when one piece of armor breaks before the other, or something like that. So, moral of the story, always wear armor if you're going to get into a fight. The higher the damage reduction, the better. And if you're in single player, don't starve. It's a good idea to wear double armor against anything that hits really hard, such as the seasonal giants or the ancient guardian down in the ruins, or double armor against anything that you might want to just tank. And don't starve together, it's generally not worthwhile to wear two armors at once, so a football helmet or a log suit is generally all you need most of the time, though you might want to have a backup just in case your armor breaks during a fight. Now let's talk about weapons. There are a ton of different items that can be used to kill stuff and don't starve, but when it comes to weapons that you'll actually want to use to kill stuff the vast majority of the time, the list is pretty small. And as this is a beginner's guide series, I'm only going to focus on a much smaller list of weapons that you're likely to use during the early game as you're learning the ropes. In other words, although dark swords and thulicite clubs are amazing, I'm not going to suggest that you go jogging into the ruins when you're just learning to survive through your first year, as the result is likely... But in the early game, if you find yourself wanting or needing to kill something before you've made a science machine, then your best option is to simply use your axe, which does 27.2 damage per hit and can be used 100 times as a weapon before it breaks. The pickaxe also does the same damage as an axe, but really should never be used as a weapon, as the pickaxe costs double the flint and twigs, and it only has 33 uses, whether against butterflies or boulders. Once you've got a science machine, you should go ahead and upgrade to a spear. It does only a little more damage than an axe at 34 damage per hit, but it can be used 150 times and will kill things faster, meaning less time for things to hit you back. It's a fairly good general purpose weapon and is fine to use on easy mobs like spiders, tall birds, and were pigs, but I wouldn't use it for anything particularly dangerous. And as for better weapons, a fabulous all around weapon that is cheap and highly effective at killing bosses and everything else is the Hambat. It takes two meat and one pigskin to make, the exact loot that drops from a were pig, as well as two twigs, and can be prototyped in an alchemy engine. One of its best perks is that it has infinite durability. Unlike other weapons that lose durability each time you hit something, the Hambat instead spoils over time like food items, and its damage goes down as it spoils over a 10 day lifespan. But during that time span, you can use it as much as you want, and when fresh, it does almost 60 damage per hit, the same as a Thulicite Club, and only slightly less than a Dark Sword. Over time, its damage will go down, ending at about 30 just before it spoils and turns into rot. Just like food, its lifespan can be extended by storing it in a fridge, and it will spoil slower in winter but faster in summer. It can also be stored fresh in a bundling wrap where it won't lose durability while stored. An alternative to the Hambat that has fixed damage but only 100 uses is the Tentacle Spike. These can commonly be picked up in the swamp war zones whenever spiders or merms get into fights with tentacles. It does 51 damage, so not quite as much as a fresh Hambat, but considerably more than a spear and enough to kill hounds in 3 hits and spiders in 2 hits. It's not a bad idea to keep a couple at base or even one in Chester, so you can bust it out if your Hambat is getting low and you need extra damage output before you can make another one. So, to recap on weapons, for beginners learning Don't Starve, your best weapons are the axe until you can get a spear, and both of which will be completely outclassed by the Hambat and or Tentacle Spike once they are available. And those latter two will work great against anything and everything you might ever want to fight throughout the game until you learn to get something better. And speaking of fighting, let's shift gears and get into some actual combat technique. The best way to fight the majority of mobs and don't starve is to use a kiting method. 
The method is simply this. Most mobs will do their attack whenever they get in range of your character, so the trick is to get close enough to trigger the initiation of their attack, then quickly move out of the attack's range, which is usually pretty small, then move back in and land a safe number of hits before the mob can attack again. Different mobs have different attack speed timers, basically how soon they can launch another attack, so the number of safe hits you can land will vary from mob to mob. There are also some mobs that are harder to kite than others, as well as some that you're better off just tanking, which I'll detail in the mob specific sections that come next. But in general, kiting is the approach you'll want to use for the vast majority of your battles unless otherwise noted. And now, without further ado, here's the A to Z, or rather B to W, of surface level mobs in Don't Starve Reign of Giants. I'll only include stuff that is able to fight back, so go somewhere else if you need help killing rabbits or butterflies. Battalisks are annoying hostile mobs that can be found on the surface near open sinkholes and spawn during dusk. They have a fast attack pattern but really low health. Dodge their attack, then quickly land two hits with a spear to kill them. A tentacle spike or better downs them in one hit. Beefalo and Koalophants have the same attack pattern and health so I'll cover them together. Note that Koalophants hit harder for 50 damage whereas Beefalo will only do 34 but will try to attack in numbers. With Beefalo you'll want to get one isolated from the herd then use a kiting pattern of 6 hits after a dodge. Two Beefalo can be fought at once if you can get their attacks synchronized, but in that case I would only do 5 or maybe 4 hits per dodge. More than that just isn't worth the risk. For Koalophants, you'll need to chase them to the coast or other obstacle to get close enough to initiate combat or tag them with a ranged weapon such as a boomerang. After that, they are fought the same as a Beefalo. Bees and Killer Bees I'll make this simple, put on the log suit and beekeeper's hat and then tank them with a the fresh hand bat. Single bees can be stun locked while groups of bees can be strung out a bit to reduce the incoming damage to your gear. They initiate their attacks really fast though so completely avoiding hits is almost impossible. But with a beekeeper hat and log suit you won't take any damage yourself, it will all go to your armor. Buzzards are tricky to take down since they like to fly away even when baited, so here's an easy way to bag these birds. Make a bush hat, wear chest armor, and then hide on top of the bait. Wait for a buzzer to take a bite of the meat, then hold Control F until it's dead. Their attack only does 15 damage with no armor, so they aren't even worth kiting. Just smack them and stock up on meat. Catcoons are super easy, just run up and whack them until they're dead, which will happen before they get mad enough to hit you back. Clockwork Bishops are one of those few mobs that tanking is definitely your best bet. Although it is possible to dodge their ranged attacks when you're further away, usually by running at a 90 degree angle to them, for killing them you just want to throw on armor, run up, and kill them till they're dead. Clockwork Knights are one of the few enemies that will try to kite you. The trick is to bait their attack, then as fast as possible get close enough to hit them a couple of times before they are able to hop away. Two hits, then dodge again. If they do their neighing sound in animation, you can get a few extra hits in. If you have trouble not getting kited yourself, then tanking with stacked armor is also a good option. Clockwork Rooks can sometimes be a little bit annoying as they like to run away and can be hard to keep up with. Generally tanking them works best, but if you have a forest nearby, you can use them to knock down a bunch of trees and eventually a tree guard will spawn and take them out for you. Crawling Horrors are the easier of the two shadow creatures that, on the surface, only attack when you're fully insane. To fight, bait their attack, move away, then press F to attack them, and hold the attack key down so that you can sometimes land a second hit as they warp away. Rinse and repeat until dead. Yukus is disgusting. At the start of a new world you have a 5% chance to get him or a varg at the end of a suspicious dirt trail which goes up to 33% to get one or the other of these nasties by day 100. Yukus will hit you with a snot ball that will immobilize you and prevent you from attacking then run up and drop kick your face. For that reason I don't recommend trying to fight him alone, instead bring 4 or so befriended pigs who will distract Yukus and break you out of the snot if you get hit. Eye plants that spawn around a lure plant have low health but attack quickly. One hit with a spear or better will take out the eye plant and you just have to hold F to play connect the dots until you are in range of the lure plant and can take it out. Easy peasy. 
Frogs are easy to kill alone, but because they call over all their nearby friends, they can be deadly if there are very many around. For a single frog, you can hit it once, then dodge, then hit two more times if you're using a spear. If you have a weapon that does 50 damage or more, two hits on a frog that hasn't aggroed on you will kill it before it can hit you. Otherwise, dodge its attack, then hit it twice before it can attack again. Ghosts do an AoE attack, much like Abigail, so if for some reason you want to fight one, running in and tanking it is the way to go, or you can try to kite it one hit at a time. But since they don't drop anything anyways, why bother? And besides, killing the dead again really isn't very nice. Guardian pigs are aggressive pigs that will attack you if you get too close. They don't kite as much as regular pigs though, but they also have a much faster attack pattern. One hit, then dodge works best, rinse and repeat till dead. Hounds are really easy if there's just one or two, but if you have a whole pack, your best bet is to run and try to get them distracted onto something else. I'll do a separate video later dealing specifically with periodic hound attacks, but for individual hounds, you want to dodge the attack, then land two hits, then dodge again, and go back in for the kill. A spear takes five hits total, so after the second dodge, you can land the remaining three hits needed to kill it before it can attack again. If you have a tentacle spike or better, you can dodge the first attack, then hit it three times to kill it before it can attack you. Red and blue hounds have less health than black ones, and can be killed after the first dodge with three hits from a spear or two hits from a tentacle spike or better. Krampus is one mob that I'll cover in a separate video, as the naughtiness mechanics and interest in farming him to acquire his sack, a 14 slot backpack item, would require far more time than I want to spend here. But in the event you do find yourself in combat with a Krampus, one hit then dodge is the pattern you'll want to use to fight him. McTusk. For details on fighting the walrus hunting party, see my Winter Guide Part 2, link up in the corner. Merms. Honestly, don't bother trying to fight merms by yourself, it's just not worth it. They run faster than you and will kite you and will call over their friends if you're in the swamp. And since they live in the swamp, just get tentacles or spiders to kill them for you. That said, if you find an orphan outside of the swamp, try to get as close to its body as you can, as you might be able to stunlock it before it can dash away. Mosquitoes are much like single bees, you can just hold F and stunlock them until they're dead. Pengals were covered in the third episode of my Wagstaff playthrough, so check the link above for more on that topic. Long story short, they're really not worth fighting and will kill you dead if you aren't careful. But if you have any spare gunpowder lying around... Pigs are passive unless you attack them first, or are Weber. Once in combat, dodge, then move in close for four hits, rinse and repeat until dead. If you're having trouble getting close enough to start combat, click a piece of meat on them with your cursor, they'll stay still, but then quickly put the meat back on your hotbar and hit Ctrl F when you're close and you'll be able to hit them before they run away. Poison birch nut trees and birch nutters. I personally think these guys are hella annoying and for that reason I only ever plant pine cones for all my log needs. They are the tree guard version of birch nut trees and have a much higher chance to spawn than their evergreen counterparts. They can only be killed with an axe or other tree felling methods such as a charging rook or a berger. The tiny birch nutters do very low damage and can be killed in one hit with the tentacle spike or better, so just tank them with stacked armor and take them out fast so you can get close to the poison tree and chop it down. It will send out a root that attacks much like a tentacle, so when it does, simply move away. But seriously, I hate these guys. Individual spiders can simply be stunlocked to death. Three hits with a spear or two with a tentacle spike or better kills them fast. If you have two or three spiders, you can hit the lead one once, then back away while the others attack, then kill the lead one. It takes some practice, but this method can be used for whole hordes of spiders, or just bring an Abigail and you're golden. Spider Queens. For a mini boss, these ladies are really quite easy. Normal kiting pattern with three hits between attacks is pretty safe. If you are toggling to a walking stick or fighting on a road, you can probably do four hits. She's defenseless when popping out spiders, so just keep hitting her while she does that, but then you'll want to kill any new spider she spawns first before going back to her. Double armor is a good idea as she hits pretty hard. 
Spider Warriors are the green spiders that can be summoned by a spider queen but otherwise only come out if a spider is hit on or near the nest or the nest itself is attacked when there are still spiders inside the nest. They have a jump attack that can be tricky to avoid and unlike regular spiders, they don't get stunlocked. However, their attack timer is a bit variable so you can usually take them down pretty fast and if you're fighting a queen you should probably just tank them and burn them down. If you're not fighting a queen and are getting green spiders, you're probably doing it wrong anyways and should just run away until they drop aggro and go back to their nest area. Both black and green spiders can be caught in rabbit traps, but this is pretty wasteful of grass and twigs and I don't recommend it. Tall birds have a very fast attack that hits pretty hard, so definitely wear armor when fighting these birds. Otherwise, use a 2 hits per dodge kiting pattern until it's dead. Tentacles are another one of those mobs that there's usually no need to fight yourself as the swamps are typically filled with spiders and merms that will kill them for you. If you do want to fight one yourself though, you'll want to take care to avoid its attacks and only hit it once yourself before moving away again. If you get into a good rhythm, they aren't that hard, but definitely wear armor as they can kill you dead if you don't. Another method of killing them is to place four individual logs right above them and light them on fire. One hit with the spear after that and it will be dead. Terror beaks are basically fought the same as crawling horrors. Bait its attack, then hold F to hopefully land two hits as it warps away. Rinse and repeat until dead. Tree guards spawn in three different sizes. The bigger they are, the more health they have and the more damage they deal. A single tree guard can easily be fought using a kiting pattern of four hits for each dodge. If you're fighting multiple tree guards at once, you'll want to run circles around them to get them bunched up so that their attacks will be synchronized as much as possible. Because sometimes their attacks will be a little bit staggered, three hits between dodges is safer, especially if you have three at once. Note that you can only get double tree guards after day 30 and triple tree guards after day 80. Varg is another mini boss that can spawn at the end of a suspicious dirt pile and, like Yukas, your best bet is to take a befriended pigman hunting party. This mama hound will periodically summon more regular and or seasonal hounds, and if not killed quickly, can assemble a pack of 6 to 8 additional hounds which can easily stunlock and kill you if you're all alone. If you don't have any pigs to help, your best bet is to hit it fast with 6 blow darts, which should be able to kill it before any additional hounds get to you. Volt Goats are neutral mobs that can easily be killed using a 2 hit per dodge kiting pattern much like tall birds. The charged Volt Goats are the same, but because they are electrified, you'll need to have insulation on such as a raincoat, rain hat, or umbrella so you don't get electrocuted when you hit them. And last but not least, we have the Were Pig. Formed when a regular pig eats four monster meat or during a full moon, they are also known as ham bat generators and manure machines. Easy to kill though using a two hit per dodge kiting pattern. And that's it, the B to W of surface mobs and don't starve reign of giants. Now you should be well equipped to bask in the glory of victorious conquest against your foes and with all that meat ensure that you don't starve. See you in the next one, cheers.